So many times when people are learning how to code, one of the things that often comes up is the type of work that they wanna do. A lot of people are learning how to code to get a job, and that job could be freelance or it could be a nine to five. In this video, I wanna talk about some of the differences and the perks and pros and cons of each one compared to the other. Before we get into this video, make sure you hit that like button. It'll help me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's get started. Getting a nine to five job as a developer can be a little bit more difficult. You need to have experience, you need to have stuff that you can prove to an employer that you are capable of doing the job. There's more hoops to jump through, there's more of an interview process, and just overall, it's a little bit more work to get that first full-time nine to five job. Now, when it comes to freelancing, freelancing can be a little bit easier for you to get those first few clients. The problem is, is that you might be doing a lot of free work or you might not make a lot of money with those first few jobs as you're trying to build your portfolio with freelancing clients, but there is less crap that you have to deal with in that sense. You don't have to interview as much. You don't have to deal with all the corporate stuff that goes into getting a nine to five job, but you still have to pitch to clients. You still have to apply to gigs on Upwork or you need to go out and find clients locally until you can build up enough clients to then look like a professional freelancer. So while a nine to five job might have more of the corporate nonsense and the whole interviewing process for a software developer, you still have to do a lot of work in order to get jobs as a freelancer. Let's talk about making money. With a nine to five, you're guaranteed steady income, right? I mean, as guaranteed as you can be, you could lose your job tomorrow, the economy's crashing and tech companies are just firing everybody left and right right now. But in theory, a nine to five is steady income. Many developer jobs often offer really good benefits. You're gonna have health insurance. You're likely gonna have a retirement plan. You're gonna have life insurance. You're gonna have some PTO and you're, you're gonna have all the perks that come with those golden handcuffs when you're working a nine to five. And honestly, it's really nice. It's stable. If all you want is to do your job and get paid for it and you want the stability of a nine to five, that steady pay and those benefits are there. Now with freelancing on the other hand, when it comes to making money as a freelancer, it can be feast or famine, especially when you're first getting started. You may have some clients one month that need a bunch of work done and you'll make tens of thousands of dollars and then the next month you might not make anything. Once you've established some clientele and you're getting more steady work, your income can become more stable as a freelancer, but it's just not the same as having that steady nine to five paycheck. So that's something that you need to keep in mind. So while we're on the topic of income, let's talk about how much money you can make. Now, when it comes to working a nine to five, even though software developers make really good money, there is always gonna be a ceiling. If you've been doing this for a few years, that dollar amount is gonna be pretty high. Generally, an experienced software developer is gonna make six figures a year. But there is a cap and there is a ceiling and at a certain point, you're gonna pretty much make as much as you can possibly make. Yes, this point comes when you have like 10 years experience, but eventually you're gonna get to a spot where you can't really make much more than what you're already making. Now, on the flip side with freelancing, technically that ceiling is removed and really you can make as much money as you can make because you can take on different jobs and now you're not getting paid for your time. With freelancing, you're exchanging your services and what you can provide a client for money. And the thought of an hourly rate while it is incorporated into what you might charge someone, doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you're gonna make. You may make a lot more. You may take a job that's $5,000 and takes you a couple days to complete. It's really pretty much up to you how quick you can get a job done. And once you have freelance clients that are paying you well for your services, you could make a lot of money. And eventually, if you're a good enough freelancer and you get enough clients, you could potentially create an agency where you have other developers that work for you and you take on more and more work and you scale up. And then, like I said, your ceiling is removed. The thing is, it's hard to get there. And while there are a lot of freelancers that make it there, it's not necessarily the case for everyone who sets out to become a freelancer. All right, now that we've kind of covered the income and what you can make and earning potential, let's talk about the flexibility when it comes to choosing where you work and working from home. Now, there are a lot of jobs and a lot of companies that offer remote work. We've seen in the last few years that almost every software developer job went remote, and now we're seeing that a lot of companies are trying to drag people back into the office. If you don't have a remote job and you're working a nine to five, 
chances are you're gonna be in a cubicle in some big building. And those buildings are sometimes really nice. And sometimes they offer a lot of perks to make the building more appealing. But at the end of the day, no matter how fancy the building is, a fancy cube is still just a cube and you're still gonna be sitting under fluorescent lights staring at your screen in some corporate office, no matter how nice it looks. Now, as a freelancer, freelancing, you're your own boss. You have a laptop and an internet connection and you can work from anywhere in the world. All right, let's talk about hours and working a nine to five. Even if you're a hundred percent remote, most jobs don't offer the flexibility of working whenever you want you're usually gonna have to be online during business hours. And yes, there are a lot of companies that offer flexible schedules, but most of the time those flexible schedules are actually a little bit more rigid than they are flexible. They're not gonna just let you log on at midnight and get your work done overnight and you know log off at 6 a.m. You're, you're never gonna have a truly flexible schedule because most of the time you're gonna have to be online during business hours at specific times. For the most part, you do have a lot more flexibility with your schedule as a freelancer. Based off of you know where your clients are at, you're, you're still gonna have to be sure that you're able to communicate with them if you need to during their business hours. But you could just roll out of bed at, you know, noon and, and jump on your laptop and talk to them and then go back to sleep and continue working in the evening if you want, because unlike a nine to five, you don't have to be there nine to five. You just need to get the job done. And one more thing about hours and schedules when it comes to a nine to five. As a software developer, you're more than likely gonna be in a salary position. But regardless of whether or not you're getting paid hourly or yearly, the thing is, is that you're pretty much gonna have to work those 40 hours a week. And yes, salary positions sometimes have to work a little bit more and sometimes we get away with working a little bit less. But generally speaking, you need to be logged in or in your cube for that block of time every day, five days a week for the rest of your life. Now, when it comes to freelancing, you're probably gonna be working more than 40 hours a week, especially when you're first getting started, especially when you're building up that clientele and you're gonna take on as much work as you can. You're always on the clock. If a client reaches out to you, you're gonna answer that call. When you work a nine to five, if your boss calls you after hours, I mean, you don't really have to answer it. Most people feel like they do, but I am one of those people who believes that when I'm off the clock, unless I am getting paid to be on call, I am not taking a call from my boss. When you're a freelancer, that that's out the window. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is uh, when you work a nine to five, you're gonna be dealing with corporate bullshit. If you work at a small company or a small agency, you may not have to deal with that, but you're always gonna have someone to answer to. You're always gonna have a boss or your boss is gonna have a boss that has a boss and they're all gonna shit on each other until it lands on you. And that's just how it is in corporate America. So don't be fooled by the cool office and the cool, fun, hipster boss that you may have. At the end of the day, shit needs to get done. You're gonna have to deal with all the bureaucracy and the red tape and, and just the, the everything that sucks about working a job. On the flip side of that, you have freelancers, right? Freelancers are their own boss. They, you know, the world is their oyster. They don't have to deal with any of the corporate America bullshit, right? Not true. Freelancers, they have bosses. It's their clients. And you don't have that buffer that you have in a nine to five where you deal with your manager and then your manager deals with his manager and, and you know, and it just goes up that ladder. When you're dealing with a client directly, you are the one that has to deal with the client. And while there are some clients that can be good and, and pretty chill, you're gonna be dealing with nightmare clients. And yes, everybody's gonna sell you the dream that if you're a freelancer, you get to pick and choose your clients and you get to tell them to go to hell if you don't like them and you don't have to work for anybody that you don't wanna work for. And that's the beauty of being a freelancer. But the truth is at the end of the day, you need to make money. You need to put food on the table. And if you're at a point where you're just getting started or you're not gonna make enough money for that month and you have to take on a client that's going to be a headache you have to deal with that client so you still have a boss and when things go wrong you're more than likely going to be the one that has to handle it and it, it could be a headache all right and that's pretty much it those are the pros and cons and the comparisons between freelancing and the nine to five life they both have their benefits if you want the stability and you want that steady paycheck and you that's all you want to do you just want to go to work and go home and not have to deal with anything else after work and you can find the job that provides that, then go for it. But again, if you wanna go full-time freelancing and you want that freelancing life and you want
want to be able to be your own boss and you want to be able to maybe grow a business one day, that's also an option, but there are things to consider on that end too. At the end of the day, figure out what it is you want to do with learning how to code, figure out what it is you want to do as a software developer and what you want from it and try them out. There's options. If you know how to code, you can do a lot of things. It, you don't have to pick one or the other. Give them both a shot and see what you want. All right, with all that said, I hope this information was helpful. If it was, make sure you hit that like button and I'll see you next time.